section 8.2, now we're going to solve by using the quadratic formula. I have the definition of the quadratic formula right there in the box. And it says before we start, we're going to have to have it in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So in problem number 1, I need to have it set equal to 0. So I want to move this to the other side, subtract 5y squared, and then add 3 to move everything to the other side and I want to put it in order according to the y value 5y squared plus 2y plus 3 equals and then this side gets a 0 now once it's in that form we're ready to name our a a is negative 5 it's this value your b is 2 and your c is 3 Okay, so now we're going to put A, B, and C and substitute it into our quadratic formula, which is right here. So I have negative X equals negative, and our B is 2, plus or minus square root. I usually put B squared minus 4 times A times C divided by 2A. So it's a good habit if before I start, um, if I have negative b plus or minus, if I put parentheses everywhere a variable is going to go, now I go back and substitute all my variables in. So I need a b here and a b here. Well, my b is 2, so I'll put a 2 in and a 2 in. My a is a negative 5. And my c is a 3. Okay, now we're going to work it. Plug in all your values, and then so simplify. X equals negative 2 plus or minus. This value is called your discriminant, and I'm going to work it. This is usually where most people make their mistakes, so be very careful. 2 squared is 4. And then I want to say negative 4 times negative 5 times 3. So negative 4 times a negative 5 is a positive 20 times 3. 20 times 3 is 60, so I'm going to say plus 60. So that gives me the square root, the square root of 64 all over negative 10. x equals negative 2 plus or minus. Square root of 64 is going to be 8 over negative 10. So I want to do this twice. I'm going to do it one time with the plus. So negative 2 plus 8 divided by negative 10. And then the next time I'm going to do negative 2 minus 8 divided by negative 10. So I'm going to solve these two out. Negative 2 plus 8 is a positive 6 over negative 10. And that simplifies to negative 3 fifths divided 2 out of each of them. Negative 2 minus negative 8 is a negative 10 over negative 10, which simplifies to 1. So my solution is going to be is going to be negative 3 fifths and a positive 1. Alright, number 2. It's in this format, but I don't really like that it's a fraction. So if we want to, we can get rid of the fraction by multiplying by a common denominator, which is going to be 2. So if I multiply every term in the problem by 2, I can get rid of the fraction. Now this 2 cancels this one, and I just have x squared minus 2x minus 2 equals 0. Okay, and then now we don't have any fractions, so we can name our a. a is 1. a is the known one there. b is negative 2. and c is negative 2. Okay, well now we're going to substitute that into our formula. So remember, I said sometimes it's a good habit to x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2a. If to go through and put parentheses everywhere, you're going to substitute those variables in. And then my b is here, negative 2. My a is here and here, and my c is just here. Okay, negative b plus or minus the square root of uh, 
for a c. So substitute all your variables in. Now we're going to evaluate this. Well, a minus a minus is just going to be plus x equals 2, plus or minus. Now we're going to evaluate this discriminant. Negative 2 squared is 4. And then I'm going to say negative 4 times 1 times negative 2 is going to be plus 8. 4 plus 8 is going to be the square root of 12. All over 2 times 1 is 2. I want to come up to the side and see if 12 breaks down, divided by prime factors. There's 6. 6 divides by 2. 3 times, and a pair does come out of it, so I have 2 square root of 3. So x equals 2, plus or minus. I rewrite the square root of 12 as 2 square root of 3. Divide that by 2. Now, because we see a 2 in each of these positions, not in the radical position, but that, it all simplifies by a 2. So if I divide a 2 out of each of those positions, I have x equals 1 plus or minus 1 square root of 3 over 1, which that's just rewritten as x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 3. My two answers would be 1 plus the square root of 3 and 1 minus the square root of 3. I think this is how the math lab wants you to type it in your solution. Alright, number three, we need to solve this, but it's not in our quadratic form yet. So the first thing we need to do is simplify. So we're going to pull this out and you get 2m squared minus 6m plus 4m minus 12 equals, on this side we have 5m minus 5 minus 12. We want to add like terms on the left. 2m squared, I add these two and I'm get minus 2m minus 12 equals 5m. When I add these two together, I get minus 17. Okay, my left side and my right side simplified. Now I need to have this set equal to 0. So if I subtract 5m from both sides, and then I'm going to do the opposite of this, so I'm going to add 17 to both sides. Now I have 2m squared minus 7m plus 5 equals 0. And now I can name my a is 2, b is negative 7, and c is 5. I'm going to put that into my quadratic formula, which is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2a. Okay, make sure you look at your formula on the previous page. Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all of it divided by 2a. Now we're going to simplify. x equals 7 plus or minus. Now let's simplify. So that's going to be 49 and then negative 2, I mean negative 4 times 2 times 5 is negative 40. So 49 minus 40 is the square root of 9 all over 4. x equals 7 plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3 over 4. So I'm going to write this two ways. I'm going to do 7 plus 3 divided by 4 and then I'm going to do 7 minus 3 divided by 4. That becomes 10 fourths which simplifies to 5 halves as one of my answers and this becomes 4 over 4, which simplifies to give me 1. So that's going to be my two solutions, 5 halves and 1.